Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another exciting episode of IndieRPGs.com Checks Out. I'm your host, Craig Stern. This is our very first episode of 2014, and we're going to be checking out a very special game, The Banner Saga. You may recall this as the uh, Viking... Let's, uh, let's lower the sound go fast if we can. Is there a way to lower the sound? Oh, that's unfortunate. You can only mute it. Oh well. Uh, anyway, you may recall this as the Viking Norse mythology-themed strategy RPG that was kickstarted back in 2012 to the tune of $723,000. Uh, the team consisted of three ex-Bioware de developers who formed their own studio called Stoic Studio. They, along with composer Austin Wintery, have been working on this game, which, coincidentally, is also kind of wintery. Ah! Let's start, shall we? The story in the Banner Saga changes based on the choices you make. You will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. As you it has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. So as you can see, these guys are, like, enormous. So those guys are giants. They're called Varl. Uh, they are one of the two races that are playable in this game. You've arrived just in time. The Chieftain in Red and his men are now looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. Click and drag around the screen to see your surroundings. Click the check mark to continue. Alright, click and drag. Pretty par for the course with mouse-driven interfaces. Let's continue. These portraits show the order of initiative, taking turns from left to right, it's your turn to act. So, uh, this is not a Fire Emblem style, or a Disgaea style system. This is more like Final Fantasy Tactics, where the order of units is predetermined. Um, there is something to that. I tend to prefer free movement, just because it's easier, but, uh, I, I will concede that this is in many ways a more tactical, uh, 
way to go about it with uh, sort of staggered turns between all the characters. So we're going to start with Shield Banger here. Movement happens before action. This blue ring shows Shield Banger is active. Blue tiles around him show where he can move. Also, pretty par for the course for turn-based strategy interfaces. Some characters fill more tiles than others. The Horned Allies are a race of giants called Varl, who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile. It's going to have a huge impact on your strategy. Click the tile you want to move to, then click the check mark to confirm. Move your Shield Banger here to get him in attack range. To target an enemy, click the tile on which they stand. Target this enemy now by clicking his tile. You can choose to either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. The numbers between each icon show the damage you will do to that stat. So we can do two points of damage to his armor, and it looks like he has four armor. Or we can do five points of damage to his health, it looks like he has five health. For obvious reasons, I think we're going to go for the health here. Yeah, strength counts as both health and damage. A loss of two strength means you'll do two less damage. If strength falls to zero, the character falls in battle. Armor blocks strength damage, but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. This enemy has only five strength remaining. A strength attack... Yes, indeed. As I was saying. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. He's down! Each time you make a kill, your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. Huzzah! After taking an action, your turn ends. Next up is the enemy. Turns always alternate, even if you are outnumbered. Alright, so it's the Chieftain. Despite being at full strength, the Chieftain will do little damage against your Shield Banger's high armor. <coughs> now it's your Warhawk's turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all characters can use Willpower to boost their actions. Willpower is a limited resource, so use it wisely. By clicking on gold tiles, a character can move further than usual at the cost of one willpower per gold tile. Red pulsing tiles beneath your enemy show how close you'll have to get to be in range. Move your Warhawk into attack range now. I think that just cost us two willpower there. Totally cool. Don't worry about it. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but your Warhawk has a special ability that lets him hit more than one guy at once. So let's click his tile to activate a special ability. That would be Tempest here, which is uh, remarkably similar to another ability that uh, I actually have had in the Telepath games called Whirlwind. Uh, basically, it lets him hit all adjacent, uh, all adjacent tiles. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Sucks to be those guys! That made quick work of the Chieftain's bodyguards. When there's only one enemy left, players enter pillage mode. During pillage, each character moves in order, and there are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Your allies now get to move twice in a row. If a character does not move on his turn, he can rest to regain one willpower. The Chieftain will rest this turn. That's not super smart, Mr. Chieftain. Gotta be honest with you. Looks like the Chieftain's in some trouble. Your shield banger won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost your damage. Click the Chieftain's tile to attack. Click the fist and then the stars above the fist to add willpower. Hey, look at that. Now we can do one extra damage. Boop. That sounds like it hurt. Pretty slick stuff. I'm a big fan of the uh, the system Why they have here. The wolf, that one? How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more threats to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add. 
Though he denied it to his last, this sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Man, so it uh, looks like Strand is ruled by uh, King Eeyore there. Chapter 1, only the sun has stopped. Well, that's good. So, so the moon's still going? Is that, uh, is that the lesson here? You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the... Wait a minute. A varl walks in step with me? How freaking big are my steps? Jeez. Alright, he cuts to the chase. What do I click to continue here? Do I click the X? Is that, is that gonna... Is that not gonna skip the thing? Well, let's try it. He cuts to the chase. Eirik, steward of Strand. I manage the governor's business. Ubin, isn't it? What do you want? The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. Seems a bit chaotic around here, Eirik. It's been worse. Uh, we've had a lot of irons in the fire. What does he want, exactly? Scalfings that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you after you took out their chieftain. Uh, the governor just wants you to make sure they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. Okay, so I'm guessing this thing it says market is yeah, where we're supposed to go. Let us click it and proceed. Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open face houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as you approach. Had I'm not in the mood today. For for what? Talking to an idiot. The scalping chieftains bled out an hour ago, Had. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's gonna try to kill you this time. I, I don't talk to. They don't talk to me! I don't have patience for this. Had sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Wait, just. Buy one of these. If everyone thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know how much? Just a little food money, eh? You motion to Gunulf, your enormous bodyguard, who looms over the man like a snake over a mouse. Gods! Eirik, laying it on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scalfings? Uh, nobleman, up by East Wall, but that was months ago, last I know. Had skulks away with a wave of Irik's hand, gathering things from his hovel, disappearing for a while until this blows over you, figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. What are we done here? Gunnolf, were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? No, just bought him while you were walking around. Why? You look like a frog. <laughs> Better than an eggplant. Gunnolf goes off to look at more stalls. I reckon that man of yours seemed unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he used to be scalping. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman is a meat hall. Best I can tell, the name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these skulls in the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. Shouldn't we have a approach of some sort? What a luxury. Come on. We've already mopped up worse today. 
Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. Okay, so we are heading... Where, exactly? Oh, here it is. Mead House! For some reason I have a hard time seeing that against the snow. Probably because the snow is blue and white, and that is blue and white. You arrive in front of what must be noblemen. A few minutes later, Eirik appears, with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out, Eirik says over his shoulder. Ready? You're walking through the front door? They ran to a mead house, says Valgard. I'll be surprised if they can stand up straight right now. Okay, here we go. Valgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of a table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken scoffing scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins in the process. Cool. Man, we're, uh, we're pretty far away from everyone, aren't we? Alright, so it looks like... Are we, are we like, positioning our characters here? What's, what's going on? Yeah, we are. Okay. And then I'm taking we click this one. We're, in fact, ready. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, fancy that. Alright, so let's see. Eirik is... Uh, Give willpower to allies at any range. That's cool. He can move through allies. That's also cool. So he's going to be good for boosting my Varl if they use willpower to do some special stuff. He, I think, is going to want to run up here and use Tempest. Or maybe a... Yeah, he can only... Maybe he runs up here. Yeah, I think I'm going to want to have him run up here let these guys surround him and then use Tempest, and he can feed him more willpower if need be. So that's cool. And there's me hanging out in the back, doing nothing. Like a chump. Here's my shield banger. So he has a counter attack. That's handy. Um, and what does this guy do? He adds one armor to allies and himself while adjacent to the ally. Oh, that's pretty handy. I don't know why the heck I would want him over there. I'd probably want him in between my shield banger and my... What is this called again? Whatever Gunulf is. This guy, Warhawk, is it? I think he's a Warhawk. And he will just kind of keep maybe like back here or something. Does that make sense? Is that a good move? I don't know! But I guess we'll find out soon enough. Alright, so... Valgard's gonna go first, followed by Eirik. So... So that guy is... That guy and that guy are going to get to go before my Varl. So he's going to be able to move up to here. Uh, assuming he doesn't use any willpower. This guy is going to get to move up to here. So... I'm safe to move uh, Valgard up a few spaces, at least. Let's move him right over here. And we'll just... How do we end, end the turn? Oh, there we go. That's weird. That's the end turn symbol. Okay. I'm used to that denoting, like, undo or something. Uh, Eirik, you come hang out over here, since you can easily walk through any units you need to. You'll just be here for now. Very good. Shield Banger, you're going to be over here, drawing attacks and counterattacking for armor damage. And taking a little defense bonus because of Valgard. And you 
head on over here. And let's do an attack on this guy. What does he have? Eight strength and five armor. So we could do one armor damage or ten strength damage. Um, gee, I think I know what I want to do. Plus one renown. Alright, so what's this now? Stonewall does what? Blocks three damage per hit one round. And is that just on himself? I guess it's just on himself. Eh! I don't know. Not really super clear on how that works, but what the hell, let's try it. Yeah, I guess that's just on himself. Alright, that, that was a pretty frenzied attack there. But he took a ton of armor damage doing it. Pyrek, you come hang out over here. And just end your turn. Okay. Whoops. No, I do not want to do that. Let's undo that. Whoops. <laughs> okay. You. What are your spe what's your special? Return the favor. Okay, you have that. What is this? Okay, well, whatever it is, apparently I can't use it. So we're just gonna attack. We're gonna take this guy down. Because, uh... Eh, maybe not. Maybe this guy? Yeah, let's break his armor. You move over here. And let's do Tempest. Nicely done. Uh, let's attack this guy. Now let's put a couple willpower into it to completely decimate his armor. <laughs> Couldn't have felt good. Nah, yeah, let's let's get rid of the rest of his armor. Yeah, it's not gonna do anything. Down goes that guy. Okay. Oh. What do you know? Just enough to kill this guy. Go for it, Valgar. Is it Valgar? Is that your name? I'm sorry. I've already forgotten. But we really value your contributions to this battle. Just wanted to let you know that. Do, 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 do. Let's break a little armor. <laughs> I'm I'm very sorry. I don't mean to be flip here, but uh, some of the sound effects in this game are just ridiculous. Oh man, my uh my shield banger's in kind of bad shape. I think I'm gonna run away with him here. Okay. Something tells me Tempest is gonna hit my own guys. Yeah, let's not do that. Can I can I cancel? Can I cancel Tempest? 
Can I cancel Tempest? Kind of don't want to do Tempest anymore. Okay, there we go. So... Could do a lot of damage to that guy. Or a little bit of damage to that guy. Let's do a lot of damage. And... Actually, yeah, let's move here and finish this guy off. Indeed. Well said, Scal. Well said. Promotion! Gunolf is uh, now promotable. Look at that. Look at all that renown that we got for beating up a bunch of drunken dudes. The best. There they are. Gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. Eirik is looking out the hall's windows onto the bay. A fleet of longships approach with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well, Wagner. Next for Car Varl Kingship, last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guests. See what I deal with all day long? Ah, things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrive. Not me, the governor. Now, I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Uh, can I ask one more favor? What is it? If you happen to stall our guests down on the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. Eirik and Volgard hustle from the meat house. To his credit, Eirik tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug, and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. Docks! Look at that. It almost kind of looks like it says dorks. God, look at all those dorks. And their longships, jeez. Wagner. A familiar Varl steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the hills of Grafheim, abundant in purpose. God, Zubin, you're looking ancient! Comes with being old. And if there is Wagner, there must be Hakon. Must there. Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old Yox? At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Gerunder demands it. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grafheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. Just returned from Aberang, in fact. And glad for it. Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering. Golden Wolfhead emblazoned on red. The King of Men, or someone on his behalf. The King's Wealth. The king's son, Luden. Don't you know, Scrivener? We visit his capital. He visits ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Hakon has it. i almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hakon. Then you're going to Grafheim? I have the distinct feeling I finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but, uh, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. Where is Mogger? Hakon, have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few. Others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogger. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. The young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Luden looks for all the world, the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grafheim 
Should be more interesting than most years, you think. Weariness suddenly settles in, and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Wagner's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon, or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. Let's talk to the prince. Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Varl, who must be working for Luden. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Luden. Yes, you're with Wagner. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Wagner a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grafheim with my guards. Luden looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tithes to the capital. We crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? I hope to learn more about you. Oh, well, you seem to know who I am. Do you have what you need? So I do. I won't keep you. You leave wordlessly. It seemed clear that Luden was in no mood to talk. Or, he's a miserable cur. <laughs> yep, that, uh, that thought occurred to me. But um, Oh! Jokes all day. Scrivener! You find Hakon in a meat house surrounded by other Varl. Strand is no stranger to Varl, but rarely sees this many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for a flagon. Wagner's the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise. What this time? When I got here, the great hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. <laughs> Humans. I guess if I only lived as long as a yox fart, I might be desperate to make something of myself, too. It's not too late to start trying, Hakon. Hakon lets slip a low chuckle. Any Varl could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a swath through Dredge at Wagner's side in the Second War, and regularly since then. Down here I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get back to Grafheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. Drinking and talking about killing stuff. Just what a viking wants. Great Hall! At dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with a sun that never moves. The governor's crest adorns the leather supplies. Sorry, the supply leathers. All there, just as promised. To your mild surprise. You wonder if Eirik had anything to do with that. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Wagner is already here. A while later, Luden and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. Mogger steps forward. Wagner's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. We're ready. You follow Mogger and join the others. Usually the smaller doors set into the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under their breath that are best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated, tired people. It summarizes Strand well as a whole, you think. Dun-dun! Super dramatic. Hey, look at that. We're going. We're going. And look at that mega long flag. Banner, if you will. I guess we're uh, we're going on kind of a kind of a journey here. Sort of a quest. A sojourn. A saga, if you will. I don't know. I don't know. 
guess we'll, uh, guess we'll have to see what happens. The caravan stops for the day. A gift, says Mogger, cracking open mead casks, from our gracious friend, the Governor of Strand. Hours pass with raucous laughter as the mead is passed throughout camp. Drink a little, drink a lot, or toast to Wagner. Uh, what the shit? Let's toast to Wagner. Why not? You raise your drink, toasting the alliance between man and Varl. The others join in. Luden's expression is like a stone wall, but the others laugh at your exaggerations. Eventually, you sit down beside Wagner. Let's chat with Wagner. Thanks for the speech, slurs Wagner. <laughs> Looks like you didn't have to miss out after all. Thanks to Mogger, I thought the damned governor would never shut up. Did he give you the history of his entire family? He tried. Then he asked me to try to clean up his mess. For your benefit, turns out. I'd have given the job to you, too. Gods, there's no joy in politics. Speaking of, what happens after this business with Luton? Hopefully the boy goes back to Aberang, on his own, and I can take out some frustration on Dredge or something. It's starting to sound like Hakon. You know, like the life of a diplomat. <laughs> Don't you miss the fight, Ubin. You down your mead instead of replying. Wagner slouches and shakes his head. There's no great joy in killing Dredge, but this... Pretty sure this nonsense is some scheme between the two kings to force some kind of lineage. Used to be. Warriors would follow you for what you'd done. Isn't that why they follow you now? Is it? Or is it because I'm next in line? These lines are getting muddy, old Varl. They've always been muddy, Wagner. Wagner stares into the campfire, lost in thought. You'll leave him to it. You rise groggily, the campsite a casualty of merriment. Magra is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Luden stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up, you nudge Wagner. You're needed. Ah, it's Luden! Always a pleasure. You look well rested. Wagner releases a caged yawn and receives a hard-eyed stare in return. How long to Grofheim? Ha! <laughs> We're only two days out of Strand, you know. Come, I'll show you on a map. I am impatient. I desire a foot massage and a pony. Why is this trip taking so long? I am the prince of the humans. I demand a faster... Faster trip. Where? Uh, so, alright. We are here in... Wherever this is. Okay, so there's Strand. We've gone past Carlsford. And are heading... Whoops. Hang on, hang on. Where are we going again? We're going to Grofheim. So that's up here. So I guess we're going this way. Presumably. I assume we could go through the Bradabrek Peaks. Actually, let's go this way. This makes more sense. Can we do that? I guess we're not allowed to do that. I guess we have to go along the Wandering Road. At the end of the First Great War, the Varl had more to contend with than mankind to the south. Okay, we don't have enough time to read all of this lore. That's pretty cool, though. And I guess we're not actually selecting the route there. I think that was just for... Uh, purposes of getting us situated in the game world. We head north, then east, past the forts. Grofheim's far from Strand. It's gonna be a long march. You should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Scrimmerstead? What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It stays covered in ice all year. It would tear up the longships. Too bad, though. We could have shown you all the wonders of Scrimmerstead. A half-sunken city crawling with dredge prints. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? Luden exhales through the nose. A poor disguise for his contempt. 
He turns and bats aside the tent flaps as he goes, barking at his company in the distance. Arr, arr, arr. Probably not like that, but, you know, that, that'd be kind of funny. Don't poke the anthill, Wagner. He seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few more days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Luden's got a shorter wick than Hakon. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that a, is that a euphemism for something? Thanks, Wagner. Let's get moving. Another half day to Verdfell if we're lucky. Vitterfell, whatever. Whatever. These these place names are all weird. Camp is where you manage your caravan. During travel, you can enter camp any time, clicking the camp button on the travel HUD. That's funny. They spell it like a word instead of an acronym. While at camp or in towns, you can upgrade your allies or equip items in the hero's tent. You can pass time by using the rest tent. Resting will improve the caravan's morale. A high morale will reduce casualties in war and affect your willpower in combat. Each, pass each passing day will use supplies, so only rest when necessary. The training tent will allow you to safely try out any characters in a mock battle. Click leave at the bottom of the campsite when you're ready to get back to the road. That's pretty awesome. I like that. That's like how there's a Varl just kind of hanging out over here. Like, yo, what's up? Just looking at the camp. Don't mind me. Let's go to the Hero's Tent! Hero's Tent! Click on a unit to view stats, promote ranks, and learn about abilities. Hey, I know! Let's look at Gunnolf. And let's promote him. Ba boom! Click on the ability button to learn about the unit's ability. That's, that's fine, I don't care. The greatest warriors on the battlefield are those who live past their first battles to blah 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 past to legend. Build higher stats or increase your item rank. Uh, or, I guess, both. Okay, let's continue. Are you sure you want to promote for five renown? Confirm! Boom! Rank 2 Warhawk. Okay. That, that tutorial thing is not going to go away. Clearly, I have to click on this. Click the ability button to learn about the unit's abilities. Yay, thanks. I, I already knew about that. Ooh, but what's this? Is this a new one? It looks like it is. This must be from the promotion that we just gave him. The warrior hits so hard that any enemy standing adjacent to his target on a strength attack take one strength damage from the shockwave. That's pretty awesome. Especially effective against larger enemies that take up four tiles. Cool, cool, cool. And we have two points available to spend on his stats. We could increase his willpower. We could increase... What is this? Wait, hang on. Can I cancel that? Is it going to tell me what this is? Oh, here we go. Exertion. The amount of willpower you can use on any given action. Okay, so we can increase the number of willpower points we can spend on one action. Willpower will give us extra flexibility with doing more damage or moving further during battle. Strength is both damage and health. That's pretty important. Armor blocks damage. Also pretty important. And break is the amount of direct damage you can do naturally to enemies' armor. Good stuff. We have two points available. Um... Shucks. Let's increase his armor and... Actually, let's increase willpower and strength. Okay. Awesome. Look at this guy. Look at him. What a boss. And he has a giant glowing belly button. As bosses often do. Cool stuff. Oh god. Luden's an actual playable character. Can I get him killed? I'd like to get him killed. This game does have permadeath, by the way, but you have a little bit of flexibility. Characters that fall in battle don't die immediately. That doesn't happen until later. And let's leave. Basically, characters that fall in battle. Weather fell. Even the name means bad weather, where frozen wind sweeps in from the bay. They tend livestock. But most are just men driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would anyone stay? We won't stop long. Uh, yeah. What was I saying? I've already forgotten. Alright, permadeath. So, if a guy falls in battle, then you will, uh, they'll kind of have to sit out and rest 
for a few days before they can rejoin battle. Um, if your character has fallen battle too many times, then they just stay dead. And that's not good. So... You know, you don't want to trigger the permadeath, but you have a little flexibility in terms of whether it happens or not. And uh, as with everything in this game, I take it, it's about making hard choices with limited resources. Right? When you decide to rest, that takes up supply, and you have limited amounts of supplies. Um, when you run out of supplies, morale falls, characters become weaker in combat, and it's just generally a bad scene. So you gotta be sparing with the amount of time you rest. It's better to just do well in combat and not lose anyone. Obviously. And okay, peasant. By Hatterborg, that's a lot of varl for some missing cattle. What? Couple days back, sent word to Strand about the cattle. Didn't expect an army. He looks pleased with himself, until it sinks in that you aren't here on his behalf. Where have your cattle gone? Oh, wouldn't know. My boy's seen men up the hills carrying them away. Don't know many men who can hoist a whole cow by himself. Scalfings out here, maybe. Could they have Varl working for them? Not from what the governor told me. I'm going to take around and take a look around and get camp set up. The peasant spits, his eyes anxiously darting about as the caravan sets up tents. We'll be here no more than a day. There's silver for any food you've got. For hundreds of varl? Are you serious? Whatever you're willing to sell. You thinking of squatting? Not enough room for a couple hunters here. Forget hundreds of... Shut up. Hear that? Where's Lude? It's faint. Sounds like fighting and... something else. Hakon takes off at a run. Sounds like fighting and... cows. Hey yo! Clicking any tile will automatically make a path, but you can also set waypoints. Click once to make a waypoint. Now select the next waypoint. This is often useful when you need to avoid certain tiles. Now confirm the move. Okay. Spearman can attack diagonally and up to two tiles away. Press tab or click the top right banner to compare your stats with the enemies. Now click the enemy to target. Uh, hey, Luden. Listen, I know you're a dumbass and I hate you and should probably die and all, but maybe going up against this dude? Not your best plan. Armor blocks attacks on strength. For each point that an enemy's har armor is higher than your strength, there is a 10% chance the attack will be deflected. Notice the chance to hit is shown above the attack button. Attack the enemy. Uh, listen, if I'm going to suicide Luden on this guy, I'm at least going to do something useful and, like, break his armor. No? No, I have to attack with strength. Okay. And I can't even use willpower. Cool. Deflected attacks do no damage. From here on out, you will fail catastrophically if you don't break armor. Damaging both strength and armor is equally important. Good job, Luden. You're a big dumbass. But we already knew that. Alright, so first things first. This guy's a shield banger, is he not? Yes, he is. We already know. This is our this is our favorite Warhawk. And Gunolf, and here we have Hakon, who is I'm not sure what he is. Well he's some kind of Arl. Anyway. Let's move. And let's start working on this guy's armor. What is Sundering Impact again? I've already forgotten. 100% to hit, plus one strength, plus one break to target, plus one break to... Wow, okay. So Hakon's kind of a badass, looks like. Well, that's cool. Let's do it. Here, 
What is bring the pain? Yeah, that's okay. We'll send the turn. And you, we shall move over here. Come on, Gunolf. Let's see if we can do a heavy impact on this guy. Can we do that? I guess not. Maybe we have to equip him with an axe. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe these guys are both warhawks, and the Sundering Impact is just an axe thing. Hmm. Jeez. That guy is not messing around. Gunolf's in trouble, that's not good. This is, uh, this is really tough. What am I supposed to do against this guy? Okay, well, at least Hakon can sort of do something now. I kind of want to break his armor further, but... Actually, I think the strength attack is going to be more helpful, because it'll reduce the amount of damage this guy does. Okay, bring the pain. Let's do that. That's cool. Alright. So... Mogger, you move over here. I really should have just run away with Gunolf. That was kind of dumb. It wasn't worth that extra attack. Oh well. Well, our renown grew at least. And Hakon is ready for promotion. Like a boss. Continue. You trying to get yourself killed, Luden? What are you doing? I was trying. finding a. trying to get a shot in between the plates. You never seen a dredge before, boy? What kind of idiot? Break their armor first. Where did they come from? We didn't even see them. They were just... there. Hakon goes to where Wagner lies face down. The future Varl King lies motionless, aside from a spreading pool of blood. Wagner's dead. Well, that sucks. And on that happy note... Chapter 2. Is there going to be a voiceover? Am I going to get talked over in a second? About to get talked over. Is that going to happen? Is there going to be a voiceover? Okay. There is not. Anyway. <laughs> uh, there is there is kind of an animatic going on, but I'm just going to talk over it anyway, because, ladies and gentlemen, this is all that we have time for here in this episode of IndieRPGs.com Checks Out. 
I hope you've enjoyed getting a sneak peek at the Banner Saga and at seeing me stupidly lose a Gunolf in battle like a big dummy. And yeah, as you can see, this game is gorgeous. Uh, the tactics are pretty sweet. And uh, frankly, I I like the uh, I like the world. I like the way the uh, I don't know the writing is is very matter of fact, and you know it doesn't lay everything out super obviously. It's just you know everything's revealed uh, through characters rather than through exposition. And you know I like that kind of dialogue heavy writing. So so far I think this is uh, this is pretty quality on every single uh, every single point. This game was actually just released today, on the day I'm recording this, on Steam for $24.99. Totally worth it if you ask me. Um, I highly recommend it. Go out and pick it up if you are a fan of tactics games, and in particular tactical RPGs. I'm quite sure you will not regret your decision. Anyway folks, that is all I have for you right now. I'm Craig Stern with IndieRPGs.com. Thanks for watching.